us get your opinions now on this and also uh, the Supreme Court case on uh, that E-Levy injunction uh, that was uh, scrapped, thrown out, if I may say. Uh, the substantive case is yet to be heard. My colleague Kutu Brace is out getting your opinions on this. Hello. One is the fact that um, a woman of God is saying the church itself should be blamed for the level of corruption we see in Ghana because the church has not done enough to ensure that corruption is nipped in the bud. What do Ghanaians also make of this? Again, the NPP and NDC have all been fighting for I am the best accolade that everybody says I am better at managing the economy. The MPP says I am better than the NDC. The NDC says, well, my statistics are better than you. So what do we all make of this? I am here and I'm engaging some Ghanaians. Um, I am starting with uh, these two gentlemen and they will get more thought as well. Chief, uh, thank you very much for agreeing to speak to us. First of all, what do you make of the assertion that the church should be blamed for the level of corruption we see in Ghana? Um, Thank you, um, Mr. Boss. Um, honestly, for me, I do believe that what the, um, what man of God or the woman of God is saying is in the right direction, in the sense that churches, the, um, the, the pastors or the whoever is in charge over there has you know, a must wait to the extent that most of the church members find it difficult. Over the and stuff. At the same time, some of the churches too have institution like the universities and stuff but most of the people in the church who are contributing to this development are not educated why am i saying this um i, I won't even cite any example but where i used to i used to worship due to those things i have stopped worshiping because of those things because they 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 extort much from us without helping we the needy so i think the person who said that has the right and is in the right direction to say that that's my opinion on that issue mm. but but that you are talking about the man of god the, i mean the, the pastor what about you you are a christian you go to church should you be blamed for the level of corruption we have in this country oh like the corruption in this country cannot be blamed like particularly to one person like all of us but those that are in authority mm. they are supposed to be blamed most because what they say or what they do is an, like an example to us let's say my pastor look for me i at times I watch or I look up to them because two blind persons cannot, you know, work together. One must not be blind. So if a pastor, you are doing what is not right, for me, I think what you are doing is not right. So I need not to follow you. Mm. You get that? I need to follow you. So they are supposed to be blamed for the corruption of this country. If like this, uh, speak against corruption, their church members will follow them because each and every church member do believe and respect his or her leader. Mm. But, but a church member reads and understands the Bible. And the Bible has been admonishing us against stealing. So if church members are stealing, uh, can we say we can blame the, the church for it? Oh, yeah. I still believe that we can blame the church for it, particularly the leaders. Because even nowadays, when they go to the church uh, premises, they don't, they don't even speak to the right issue. They don't speak to the right issue. They only speak to um, come, I'll give you this, come, I'll, I'll give you a visa, I'll, give, I'll help you in this way. But ask for them to speak to the issue that stop uh, um, fornicating, stop gossiping, stop this. this you don't hear, you normally hear these things of late in the, church, in the churches. But you, you, you only hear, come, I'll give you visa, come, I'll give you that, come, I'll, I'll, you, you, know, you know that. So they are to be blamed, okay. they should be blamed to that issue. So he has made his point here. Let, let me speak to another gentleman here. Uh, stay with me. Um, Chief, what's your thought on this? I don't think uh, the church should be blamed for uh, the level of corruption in this country because there are a lot of people, because there are a lot of people who doesn't go to church but still engage uh, themselves in corruption. So what those people, uh, who, who should we blame? Mm -hmm. So I think the, the authorities who is in charge for punishing people who engage themselves in corruption are those we're supposed to blame uh, for the level of corruption in this country. So you think we cannot hold the church 
for the level of corruption. But, but he's arguing that the sort of teaching we give the, the, the church members is, is not leading us to fight corruption. You don't agree? No, I don't agree at all. Not at all. Because the church, they can only, they can only, uh, like, they can only advise their members not to engage themselves in corruption. But if the, uh, their members engage them, they can't punish them. There are a lot of uh, there are authorities or there are institutions who are supposed to do that job. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's not the responsibility of the, the church. Okay. The church is only to advise. Okay. So okay. if we have uh, some people who engage themselves in corruption, mm. Mm. and authorities are responsible to punish those people and they, are, they refuse to do, mm. we can't blame the church. We should blame the institutions, rather. All right. So hold on for me. I am, I am more Ghanaians are join, joining. Let, let's try and get some, some more views here. Chief, yes, sir. what do you make of the assertion that we should blame the church for the level of corruption we see in Ghana? Um, thank you. I, I, don't, I don't really know much about uh, corruption in churches. Mm. But I no, you should, this... this woman of God is saying that we have a lot of Christians in Ghana. If you look at our statistics, Christianity forms majority, or a lot of Ghanaians are Christians than Muslims and traditionalists. So it's, she's, saying, she's arguing that if that is the case, and we, we see the level of corruption we, we, we have in this country, then the church has not done something right to get its members to understand that for you to, to fear God, you need to eschew corruption. Yeah. So, yeah, so yes, I mean, one way or the other, we might say that uh, religious leaders, pastors specifically, have a role to play when it comes to corruption. I believe that they are, they are leaders that can, I mean, uh, preach a word, word in the sense that it will carry messages mm -hmm. that can actually change the attitude, can actually reform, modify the way people think and see maybe even this subject matter we are trying to talk about how what and what goes into it mm. so i believe that if if corruption is at its highest peak mm. the role that the the, the 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 religious leaders can do is to to let hold uh, sermons mm. not uh, always about the spiritual as aspect of mm. i mean churching but they can also have this uh, meetings mm. okay and then speak on corruption because to me anytime I go to church I don't I've not even gone to church and then my pastor have holds a, a conference for instance on corruption mm -hmm. yeah, so I don't really know much about corruption and I don't even know uh, if corruption has to do with uh, giving money before I can get something done for me okay so sometimes because sometimes I feel like okay to me sometimes I feel like okay if I give money out and then the person is supposed to it can do the thing for me not necessarily to abuse the person Okay, but then just to make the person or push the person to do something further mm -hmm. as an incentive. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then, to me, would that be a corruption? I don't know. Ah. But I, I feel like I feel like I feel like I feel like religious leaders have a role to play. Okay. Okay. They have the best platforms to do that. Okay. So if they and they have uh, the numbers to do that. Mm -hmm. So when they propagate, mm -hmm. every you know when you keep on listening to messages, mm -hmm. it reforms you. It makes you think in a certain pattern. Mm -hmm. It shapes your life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So certain decisions you wouldn't take, okay. even if it 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 makes you feel like you are going to lose something. Mm -hmm. You understand? It has become a part of you. Okay. So you become very disciplined in that sec section. Mm -hmm. So I believe that yes, religious leaders have a role to play because mm -hmm. I feel like they have the masses now okay. as a stand. And stats mm -hmm. have said it. You have said it. Mm -hmm. All right. Because when I go to churches and I see all these preachings and things, and most of them even have shows more than any other shows. They're able to buy the TV stations with whatever and then Charlie mm -hmm. preach. So I believe that, uh, yes, the religious leaders, they have more to do. Okay. Uh, um, one of your friends was arguing earlier that they seem to be much concerned about offering, you know, than getting members to understand, like you're saying, that what you do in terms of uh, you stealing from the state or giving money to someone to get him to do something in your favor is corruption. You, s you seem to agree with him. 
like if you what, what I, 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 I mean his, his, his point is that the church is more about offering offering than getting people to understand that as a Christian you should eschew corruption if, if it's about offering offering you know offering one way or the other is mandatory mm. okay because it's not necessarily that if you don't have the money you can't pay mm. but it is it is anything you know the bible is constitutional mm. one way or the other so we work with the bible mm. but there's always a caveat to even the constitutions okay, okay. Mm. so there's always a condition so what if okay. this is not there so what if i don't have the money to pay mm. Mm. does that necessarily mean that oh so corruption in its sense is like with what you just asked it's like um i i i i I, I, I wouldn't say that I can actually even draw a thin line between why people say that offering, for instance, is corruption. Offering can be corruption, can it? Oh, is that not the question you're asking? No, no. I'm saying that because the, the, when you go to church today, it's about we giving offering. No, no, no. When we are doing fundraising, they put people in front to give a lot of money. You know. Yeah, I mean that uh, that is that is not that's not corruption. No, that that is not. But the argument is that the church is focused on that one than getting the members to understand that stealing money from the state or your organization yeah, or giving so, money. So anything, uh, uh, anything you do, mm. you do over and over again, is questionable. Mm. So if every time we hold no, if every time we hold uh, that's those kind of sessions mm -hmm. that. Okay, we are raising money. We are raising money. In the long run, it will even make people more corrupt. Okay. All right. Uh, it's getting interesting here. Stay with us. There's a lot for us to talk about. Now, I've had four. So, before I come to you, let me bring in this young man as well. Uh, Chief, um, what's your thought on the point that the church, uh, stay with me, yeah? The church has not done much in fighting corruption. What, what will be your response? My response is uh, the church has not, uh, has not done much in fighting corruption. It's the kind of sermons they preach in the church more times is about money, money. And the church is more, especially the pastor, they are more interested in acquiring awards, using the members more than preaching uh, those kind of stuff, like mm. about talking about like the seats, uh, mm. the kind of activities they do to, uh, to engage in corruption and mm. stuff. Mm. Like, for example, uh, most of the politicians, when they go to church, they normally give a lot of offer, so a lot of offering. Mm. So they don't talk about it. Says you know, the moment you talk about it, the person is not going to come to his church or or something. So they don't talk about those kind of stars. You get it? That's why they they are they are no more into talking about that kind of this thing, that kind of uh, this thing, corruption and stuff. That's my idea about it. Interesting. So once we've all. Come to okay. So one person disagrees that the church is to blame for the level of corruption we see. Now, for those of you who think that church is to blame, what do you like to see if we want the church to play a role in fighting corruption? Okay, thank you, thank you very much once again. Um, let me clear something. Um, in the, first of all, let's ask ourselves what is corruption, and even uh, most Ghanaians don't know that even your attitude towards your brother or your sister is a it can be a corruption so you shouldn't like mostly think about uh giving money for you to get something done that's only the, the that's a, just a minute type of corruption so corruption is about your attitude everything so let's ask ourselves how many of the pastors or the like ch church leaders who speak against those attitudes most like you lettering the place is a type of corruption but they don't talk about those things. All they talk about is, um, come, I, I, I will give you a visa, come, I will do this to, come, I'll give up to you. And my, my other guys too said that um, the Bible is like constitution. The Bible cannot be a constitution because when you, when you go against the Bible, no one is going to punish you or take you to court as when you go about the constitution. And the Bible too is mandatory between you and your God, but it's not mandatory between, between you and your pastor or even the, 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 the state. So the Bible is not mandatory, as he said earlier on. So if the uh, church uh, members, they don't understand what is corruption, most of them, what they understand is giving money for things to be done. And the pastors too are not what, educating them on the, those issues. For me, for, for instance, if I, I'm just a layman person, when I go to church and my father said, when you do ABC, it amounts to corruption, so don't, don't do it. For me, I don't have money that I'm going to pay to person, a person B for me to get something done. But my attitude is 
uh, can be a, a corrupt attitude. If my father educates me on those things, since I don't have money, I will just go by the, what he said. Don't go to place A. I won't go there. So at that, that instant, we are reducing corruption. But they are not doing that. All they are more interested in, in, in as I said earlier on, is they are interested in um, amazing work. As I said earlier on, when you go to some of the past their houses, they have a lot of clothes, foods over there, but some of their members are suffering. But when you go to church, they said, uh, we are going to, uh, 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 what do you call it, Kofiniyama. Mm. When, when you don't give, I, I, I was one a church member to a very huge church in this country. When I go to church, I went, I went there over four to five years. I wasn't recognized. Why? Because I don't have money. You get that? <laughs> yeah, because I don't have money. I'm, you, I want, you think so? I think so. Because when you go to church, they have something called show. Mm -hmm. one, somebody is giving 200 million instant, 100 million instant. My, 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 my thing is one city. So do even those who give uh, 50 cities, 100 cities, they have different kinds of prayers that they pray for them. You, you bear with me. Well, they play with them. But, but, but when you give 200 cities or you give 100 cities, when you give 100 cities or 200 cities, they will pray for you differently in, in, in a way that like they, they will let you know that God is up receiving or God is giving you so, something instant but those we pay once a day they gather us together and pray for us once okay. even in, in, in a snappy way All you get that right. okay thank you very much so that's it you you, you said you have a counter to that yes I, I just I just mm -hmm. I just systematically want to stop and unravel one or two things that he claimed that wasn't mandatory I when I went I was just looking at the correlation because corruption really really it is not something I didn't want to relate it biblically, so I was using the constitution. So if it is constitutional, then why do we say if it is constitutional? Then I'll say that okay, then it's mandatory. If it is mandatory, then I told you that there was a caveat to it. So even if I have my, I don't have money to go to church, okay, that doesn't stop me from not what going. Do you understand me? And also, I believe that the churches can help, okay, because they have the ma the, the, the 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 platforms. Okay, they have the platform. They can they can preach some of this. They can hold they can hold conferences mm. even in their church, not necessarily the the, the older ones. Mm. Okay, the youthful ones. They should have conferences mm. and teach them. Let them know that this is what corruption is. These are the behaviors that when you put up may lead to the corruption. Okay. These are the things that you are supposed to look out for mm. when somebody try is trying to induce you and trying to post something. You is trying to put you in a condition that will make you uncomfortable. Mm. Okay, then you know that, okay, if I take these decisions, it will lead me to corruption. Okay. So I believe that the religious leaders as a whole and as a country, we all need to put our hands on decks. Okay. And then, and then, and then, I mean, a kettle, we can't do away with it, but we can just kettle the level of corruption in the country. All right, uh, thank you very much. So this, this is the, this brings us to the end of the discussion for the first topic. Now the second topic, which of course is very relevant to all of us, especially you, is the fact that both the NDC and the MPP are arguing over who is the best manager of this economy. <laughs> now, let me. Oh, all of you are laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me. Let me bring it to you. You. You would. You would know. What. What do you make of this? Let me start from you. Yeah, I think the NDC is. is, 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 is they are better managers than the MPP. Oh, okay. W what makes you think so? Because, comp like, comparing uh, uh, before twenty. Let's say 2016 and now we can we, we can see that yeah the NDC was a little bit better than what is going on now in Ghana. All right, okay. So he says it's the NDC that is better than the MPP. Chief, what do you make of it? Uh, as I usually say, for me, even to begin with, I will just cite one example that shows that the NDC is far far better than. NDP in terms of managing the managing or fighting corruption. Um, during uh, ex president Mohammed's administration, his his own appointee Victoria Hammond, when she just made an, a, a, a statement or that when she get four million cities or dollars, she will quit politics. Mohammed said then, even with this intention, we can't I can't work with you because there's no way we're going to end this money within the four year uh, period that we are supposed to work together. Let's bring that to this current administration. There are a lot of corruption cases, even at the presidency, and the years ago, squash it. But the president earlier on said that we shouldn't be uh, spectators, but should be citizens. But when he raised all this concern, all the, he just said, uh, he said, there's commission, they uh, lambard the report then, 
they are good to go. Most cases are there that we, we cannot cite or pinpoint to. But, you know, with NDC, even aside that, Mahama also had, uh, also take his own appointees, like uh, Abu Kapele and stuff. They take them to court. So, even with these examples, it's clearly shows that the NDC is, in terms of fighting corruption, is clear and better than the MPP as they tout it. Okay. What about managing the economy? Because that's, that's the, 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 the contention there. Oh, but about managing the economy, um, I also think with the management of the economy, the NDC is far better in terms of managing the economy than the MPP. Why am I saying this? During the administration of the NDC, though things wasn't easy as we, we want it, but it's far better than as we've we, we seen today. Because the kind of promises our current president, uh, president made before getting to power, he has not realized that we don't lie our way into hot power. Because the reality has, has caught him okay. red handed. Okay. Because let's even compare a uh, dollar to city ratio. During Mohammed's administration, it was four cities, 20 persuades before they left office. But now, seven cities and queens. Okay. You get it? So, 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 so if we are, we are uh, uh, comparing the eight years term and the five years term as we are in, they are far better than the MPP. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Chief, what do you also make of this? This debate that in terms of that that the NDC and the MPP who is a better manager of the of the Ghanaian economy. For me, in management of the economy, NDC and MPP, I think they are both not doing well. Okay. But I think NDC is far better than the MPP. Like uh, looking at the unemployment rate, and uh, a lot of graduate students are in the house now, getting you know, applying for jobs. And his, uh, now it has led to a scamming something. The scamming has turned to a job in this country okay? because the person wants to survive by all means. He doesn't have the means, so you have to find a ways and means to survive. People are duping people for money and stuff. That's why this MTN there has been a lot of scams and stuff, yeah, going on and stuff. You get it. So in terms of managing the economy, there. MPP, NDC is far better, a bit than a MPP. Okay. Looking right. at this current situation, we are, because if you have 10 cities like this, now you can't buy anything. It can only, only get to go back. Hey, go back, <laughs> the Kenke cry. You, I, I just bought Kenke and I, oh, I didn't feel it at all. <laughs> Not at all, but so it's like, yeah. With 10 Ghana cities, you didn't no, feel it. No, Kenke is three cities and stuff. Two cities is like, it's like just. Interesting, Benjamin. And you and I were just talking about the fact that for many of these people, assessing the economy would have nothing to do with GDP figures and have nothing to do with our, 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 our um, debt to GDP ratio. It's all about how they feel in their pockets and how much, uh, you know, 10 CDs can afford them. Mm. And we just saw that. I think we knew what was going to happen. This gentleman just told us, you know, his struggle this morning in getting yeah. breakfast. Yeah. Uh, the question then would be, what is the GDP of your own pocket? You know, that, 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 is, that is how we appreciate it. The micro, micro, no. So when I dip my hands into my pockets right now, it's a memory. So you, awesome. that, is, that is what we're looking at. When, when I have to go, and, and Bernice, I'll tell you, when I have to go get fuel every week. <laughs> it's challenging, isn't it? It's challenging. <laughs> it's, now, it's, it's not an easy distance. You know, I, I have one of my sisters, when we go to the market. And I'm laughing, but there's no laughing matter. We're, we're trying to purchase an item, and the, 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 the seller says, Oh, my yeah. yeah. things yeah. have been increased. Yeah. Then she says, Oh, but yes, you're in two years. It's your moon. It's your day. Yeah. So, we need to find a middle ground. Do you, do, know? Do you, know, do you know one of the, the, not, well, funniest, but mm -hmm. also very real ones? going to market nowadays yeah. like you you can go with 200 cds today it, it will shock you that tomorrow tomorrow it's, it's real 200 cds can't get you what 200 it's CDs real i mean these so are those are the real di dynamics real everyday issues yeah. but before they they were talking about the uh issue of who's handled the economy better the big one on church and corruption and we had a very interesting conversation with reverend dr opony frimpong he's of the view that you can't blame the church there's very little the church can do to preach, to admonish, to encourage. The real actors are those who've been voted into power, who have to enforce the a lot of whom, A lot of whom are also members Christian. Of the yes. A lot of whom are also Christian. And there's yes. a poll we'll be uh, referencing shortly. But I, I, I just want to say that we cannot totally detach the church from uh, mm. these matters. Because, look, the churches who know 
Uh, th this person, before getting into politics, had X. All of a sudden, the person has Z. Mm -hmm. What accounts for that? And we make these people elders. Mm -hmm. We give them front rows in the churches and all of that. Yes. We, we hype. I think that is where the church is culpable. But beyond that, like you're saying, the moral fabric generally of our country points towards corruption. You speak to people, even people in uh, university, tertiary institutions today, and some of them are very blunt. Oh, I want to go into politics. I'm going into student politics. From there, I want to go into national politics. Why? Oh, nasa ehwa ni yedi na it's unfortunate. Mm. Anyway, so we'll take your quick comment on that. And we asked you if uh, the church should be blamed for increasing acts of corruption in the country. And a lot of you shared your comments with us and we'll, do, uh, we'll share them with the rest of the world. Uh, Alex says, Alexis, sorry, says, oh, yes, not only uh, are they facilitating it by not preaching against it, they also accept proceeds from corrupt acts as blessings from God. And... Sumaila responds and says, has the church asked anybody to go take bribes and engage in corrupt practices? You can only conclude that someone is corrupt when he or she is convicted of corruption. So that's someone's argument also. If somebody... How, how many of them uh, do get to be convicted? Mm -hmm. Looking at, at the climate of our yeah. political system, where a lot of the time, within both regimes, people are covered up. Mm -hmm. I, I know one may do better than the other, but a lot of the time you can see it is glaring. Well, they'll tell you evidence in court and all of that. We see cover-ups. How, how, how will they be exposed then? Mm. So Sumaila says, well, you can't, you can't say anyone is engaged in corrupt acts until they've been found guilty yeah. uh, by a competent court. And Under Alexis... current jurisdiction, they will never be found. Mm. I mean, when I say current, I don't refer to this administration. I'm saying the dispensation, that the way it is going yeah. now, party yeah. to party. So, so they engage in an interesting banter on this particular one. So uh, you can also get onto our Facebook page and join the conversation. But Jerry Kwekudansu says, church culture and tradition, poverty, as well as the political party system given by the constitution each has a role so he thinks that we shouldn't just put it at the feet of the church don louis says the time john mahama was president the church was second in terms of corruption ranking today the church is first okay i don't know uh, what ranking he's referencing here because i'm not aware of this obviously uh, a ranking from don louis g <laughs> Timothy says, it's lame to assert that church should be blamed for the increasing acts of corruption. Without the role of the body of Christ, it would have been worse. I, and I concur to an extent, mm. right? Because you can always say the situation is bad. Democracy is bad. At, at least the way we are practicing it, you can say it is bad. But without it, where would we have been? Mm. Maybe a military regime. That's an interesting angle to the conversation. Uh -huh. For Dr. Opuni Frimpong, he says Ghana as a whole needs to be born again. Not the individuals in Ghana, but the right. country itself. Mm. Richard says, why would anyone blame the church? An inanimate building? Okay, I'm sure the, the argument of whether the church is the building it's, it's or the not church a is the body. It, it is you know, the body. Yeah. So you're, you're taking us into a bit of theology here, but he says, what we as a people find difficult to do is taking responsibility. We always blame something, someone else but ourselves. How hard is it to admit that we are corrupt until we can admit that we are the problem we can never solve anything see though these con uh, contributors have pearls of wisdom bits of pearls of wisdom in what they're saying because a lot of the problem is us yes. as a people and you ask yourself the politicians they come from us our families our homes our communities so there must be something we're also doing as a people mm. that makes them think oh then I must act in certain ways in order to please the people. Look, a typical example, I've had MPs sit in the studio and tell me about the barrage of requests they get every day. <clears throat> Funeral, adoring. Um, Weddings. Someone once told me that, someone came to him and said, you know, I, I, I am starting up a building and I want you to help me with the foundation. Like, how does that happen? Mm. Anyway. So we're bringing you more of your thoughts, your reflections on that from that social media poll to find out what your reflections are, what your thinking is. Do you agree when it is said that the church in Ghana is responsible for uh, the, the rot we are seeing mm. in 
the system. So we, we, uh, we have a poll on Twitter. We'll take it shortly and then we'll open the phone line for you to share your thoughts with us uh, on this particular issue on whether the church should be blamed uh, for endemic corruption in Ghana. So uh, this is our poll on Twitter. Uh, should the church be blamed for increasing acts of corruption in the country? And 60% of our respondents say yes and 40% say no. And uh, well, we've got some few minutes left for the poll to end. You can get there. So some seven minutes, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think, do, do, do you think uh, it would change anything? 131 votes so far. I don't think this is going to be a Manchester City, Real Madrid <laughs> situation <laughs> where in the last minute maybe there yeah. could be a flip. Yeah. But so, so from the poll, many people believe that the church should be blamed. Uh, but again, you want to ask, ask the question, why would you want to blame someone who has no power to put in the structures. That's Dr. Puni's argument. There are state actors res responsible and state institutions responsible mm. for putting in the right structures and enforcing the law and implementing the law. So for those of us who just have a role to say, oh, please don't be corrupt. Please don't do this. Please don't do that. And that's where our job ends. I, How I, do you blame us? For I'll that? look at it from two angles. I feel the church too, in terms of church leadership, has become political, and by so doing, they have taken off part of the covering they have. Because we've seen people, whether for or against whichever political party, mm. spew things that are politics rather than teachings of the church. That is part of the problem. But the other bit you ought to look at when it comes to this question has to do with our leaders. Predominantly, they've been, they've been Christian, haven't they? Yes. That's an angle to look at it from. Our presidents, I was, I was indicating in the news review that people mistake Liman for a Muslim. He wasn't a Muslim. So most of our leaders, though he didn't subscribe to Christianity either, he had a mix of things, but that's for another day. We've had all of these leaders, our presidents by and large, in the Fourth Republic, what have they been? Christian. Mm -hmm. So I feel, yes, uh, some burden lies on us as Christians. If we find ourselves where we are, though we've had vice presidents who've been Muslim as well, we, we have to account. Have we lived up to expectation? That's, that's the question. All right, we'd like, we'd like to hear what you also have to say. You can call us. Uh, our numbers will be put up on the screen shortly. Uh, do share your thoughts with us. Where do you stand in this conversation? Uh, we'll be glad to know. And then most importantly, what can we do to change the narrative? Over time, we've tried a couple of things. Recently, uh, introducing the special prosecutor. Has it changed anything for you? Or do you still think that we have this hurdle to cross when it comes to corruption in Ghana? Do call us. Uh, Benjamin, do you want to announce the numbers? 0302, gladly burn us. 0302, 211, 691, extension 2. 0302, 211-691, extension 2. It will be rolling on your screen as well, so just give us a call. And please, let me mention, when you call, don't focus on the sound, the sound from your uh, TV or whatever. Please, just focus on the interaction with us. But let's take some social media comments exactly. before we Exactly, and this is quite a lengthy one from Abdul. I'll see how I can uh, summarize it. Let us stop always criticizing the church, he says, in the fight against corruption. Does the church have to be in every member's house or workplace? The church is doing all it can, uh, but human beings' quest for wealth and earthly delights is unstoppable. You can say the church has to refuse their contributions. But here again, how do I know for sure that somebody is engaged in corruption when they bring an offering to the church? So. Uh, Pastor Benjamin, I am a member of your church. <laughs> and I work when at, your life changes I, drastically. I, I, yeah, yeah, I'm I mean, within a very so, short space of mm, time when you mm. get into politics, I have to be suspicious. Okay, and you have to call me and ask me a few questions as my pastor, as my shepherd. I, I, but, I have to call you and give you some counsel about what I see. And if you don't satisfy me with answers, I don't know exactly. about making you an elder and the rest, but I, I may not necessarily be able to say, don't put your money into the coffers. I, I agree. To get. I agree. So it's quite a difficult situation here. Mm. Uh, he says it's like going to the Apatashiba to warn a seller not to sell to a heavy drunkard. And the seller will tell you, when I don't sell to him, another seller will do so. Even if the church identifies the corrupt ones and expels them, there's another church that will accept them. We should stop always criticizing so them. So maybe before we go on with more messages, let me be biased because the person on the line now it's called Ben. 
Ben is from New Archimbota. Good morning, Ben. Hello, Ben. Hello, Ben. Hello. Right. Okay. So, Ben to Ben. Good morning. What are your yeah, quick ben, thoughts on the, the like matters we're discussing? TV, how are you? I'm very well. Hope you are yeah. too. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Ben. Can you hear me? Hey. Okay. So, don't listen on your television. All right. Uh, all focus right, on all the right. phone. Okay. All right. All, all right. right. Do go ahead with your thoughts. Okay, yeah. Uh, please, when it comes to corruption, mm -hmm. when it comes to corruption, corruption, please, the church cannot be blamed for the level of corruption we have in this country. Mm. It can never be blamed. Okay. As you speak now, who is not having the power to prosecute people who are corrupting, being stealing state's money? Who mm. has the power? 2000 and uh, was it 2016 prior to the election? See the kind of this president, the kind of campaign he did at the court. When when he gained the power, what is now doing now? So if someone bring the church for the level of corruption we have in this country, I think if until that person can sit me down and convince me. Okay. He has appointed special prosecutor. For how long now? Mm. He's been more than six months. So are they trying to tell us that there's nobody stealing in their government? Are they trying to give us this information? Martin okay. Andrew was appointed first. And because of the things that he needed to work, he was not getting. The kind of work that he was doing. The and the vice, uh, the finance minister, in that situation they were in. So for him to bring out things, it's like they were preventing from working. Okay. They were preventing from working. All right. So he just has to present. Ben, uh, thank yes. you so much uh, for, for sharing uh, these thoughts with us. Very important points you raised. But we also have Sherman from Dodoa, Bernice. Yeah, Sherman, thank you for joining the show. Let's uh, know what you have to say. Good morning. Good morning. I think that you can entirely blame the church. First of all, I think the church is made up of individual families. And these individual families converge to make the church. So if we are saying the church is, is corrupt, then we are saying our individual families brought the corruption to the church. Because the church is not a place where we can learn the corruption. And so I think blaming the church for corruption, it's a bit... It's not bizarre. I don't know what exactly it should be. You think it's far-fetched, eh? I think it's far-fetched. We, we should do, because the church does not teach corruption. We, as people, are corrupt in our own homes, in our poor places, and then we send it to the church. I mean, the church can't do any magic to change people from their characters. Mm. They can only hope we change. And so I think our families are the places we should look at, not the church. Mm. Thank so, you very much. Thank you. So, uh, Benjamin, just before we pick our next caller, it reminds me of something uh, Dr. Opuni said, that we must begin to look at having national values. You know, go to primary schools. Now, young children yeah. are looking for leaked questions. You know, and I, and I remember speaking to a, a young girl who was just about to write her BEC, and I told her, it's not about their poor, it's about the value. It's about you thinking that you can have your way through everything. Yeah. Once you do that, even when you become a politician, you will still cut corners. Exactly. You will still have that mentality. So it's not so much about, oh, you're making it difficult to us. It's difficult to study. It's about what value. Let me ask you a question before, before we go to John mm. Bosco. Mm. Can you name one value that we have as Ghanaians? That's what Dr. Pinif was talking about. Let's do John Bosco from Bolaga. Uh, John, good morning. Um, uh, good morning. All right. What are your quick thoughts on, on, on yes, the matters we I want to uh, actually make a quick uh, contribution to the um, topic on discussion. Right. I actually have heard people um, talk about the fact that the church is not actually in people's homes. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. I've heard people um, make the suggestion that the church is not actually in people's homes. Uh, that you understand. But what we should actually know is that we should look at the broader picture. Uh, I'm a black born in a um, Christian home. In fact, the church actually goes beyond just the you know, um, building that we all see. So beyond actually any given point in time, sometimes what do we see? We see that um, 
people actually get certain favors by cutting funds. That is the end of corruption. What does the church actually do? The church, they go to the church and then they thank God, they give to and they are more like, where some me, but actually put him before me. They don't see it as a form of corruption, but as they see it mm. as a kind of God's favor. Mm. You see, and so the church is not just about the issue of um, actually preaching, but what life actually does the church itself actually show in this leadership? People get all from some money. I mean, the church clearly actually knows very well that these people are not getting the money from whose house. Yeah, they right. make them elders of the church. Right. I mean, that goes a long way. And you know, the young, we, the young people, actually look at what people do. We don't look at what they say. Okay. So if at the end of the day, you know, more or less like at the end of the day, if we keep talking and in one bit, this is what they are practicing, then everybody actually thinks that, oh, well, if you're actually able to cut corners, and then it means that you are being smart and it means that um, God is actually in favor of you. So and and, and, and a long way, yes. Right. John, thank you yes. so much for contributing. But very important point he makes there. Mm. Now, when you're Christian and you stick to the values, you appear to be a fool. Just mm. like the Bible says, sometimes mm. you, you'll mm -hmm. appear a fool. Mm -hmm. And if you cut corners, you are the smart guy. Mm. And, and also, it reminds me of a conversation I was having with a friend. Because we have weak structures and because we don't have people supervising those who've been asked to do their work, going through the right way sometimes is frustrating. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. It's very frustrating. So someone, sometimes you're, 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 you're thrown between getting what you need as quickly as you can or being morally right. And it's a challenge yeah. for many people here in this country. Yeah. They may not want Sometimes to... those in your circle will even make you, ah, we are John. Yeah, like because... You can quickly see exactly. this through. And... They may not want to give that policeman the money. But they're thinking about how he's going to frustrate them. Yeah. I, I know someone who would say, let's go through the court process. Yeah. And he will go through it to the end. Yeah. Even if it will cost him more, it will... But, but he doesn't... Leave he, him, he, I he, mean, losing he, a lot of time. He doesn't have a job like you and I do, where we have to okay. come to work at 5 a.m. And, right. and so right. he, can, he can bear the consequences. But yeah. there are so many people. So it's about fixing the structures. Let people do their work right. If I go to a government agency, due process must be followed. I right. should not be frustrated. You, right. you get what I mean? But we have Clement from Santa Maria. Hello, I think Clement. we've lost uh, Clement. So oh, maybe we now have uh, Dominic in Tamale. Great. Hello, Dominic. How's Tamale this morning? Oh, Tamale is very fantastic this okay. morning. Okay, great to have you. Let's hear what you have to say. All right, so uh, I think that the church should not uh, be, uh, should not be the case that the church should be blamed for corruption. But I believe that the church can partly be blamed because the church exists to uh, preach virtues and to ensure that people's lives are transformed. But then the church has no uh, right to punish wrongdoing. So what the church does is just to preach the good message to the members. And it is now the members, it is now left onto the members' discretion to decide to practice or not to practice. All right. So that is my opinion. Mm. Okay, doke. Uh, Dominic, thank you so much. And that's our final caller, Dominic from Tamale. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Today we've had callers from Dudua, Bolga, Tamale, uh, Niwachimoto. So it's, a, it's pretty reflective. Yeah. And, and a lot of people saying many different things. In other words, some saying you can't blame the church. Others saying, yes, there is some level of blame. And some saying, go to the root, the families. And come to think of it, our social studies, cultural studies from way back. Mm -hmm you know, society and the nucleus of it, the families. But someone else will also tell you that these families are Christian or something else, right? So it comes back to the very same chicken and egg situation. Yes, very Which one came first? Yeah. And, and there are those who say, well, the, the church must educate. You know, when we had uh, Kojo Brace joining us with yeah. the views of uh, some, some students. Indeed. And, but the National Commission for Civic Education. And now they have a, a new acting chairperson, yes. maybe I could just seize this opportunity to congratulate her, Kathleen Addy. Mm. Mm. So what are they also doing? I mean, someone was saying, what exactly is corruption? Yeah. The only thing is about signing fraudulent checks, uh, you know, and all that. But some, something very little as, you know, pushing some money to a receptionist to say, put me in front of the queue. I'll tell you something I did and, and the response 
I, I never felt, back in my University of Ghana days, first degree. So uh, we had to go through a process. You know the health screening mm -hmm. you have to go mm -hmm. through. And I got to this place. Little did I know that one of those there was my former teacher from like primary GHS, something like that. So he sees me at a point and I had a Spanish test like within an hour. He sees me and he calls me into the room. I have no idea. Then he picks my you know, form and puts it on top. For a moment, I, I actually thought, but this is going to work in my favor. I have to go, get ready for the test. But then something told me that's not the right thing to do. So I told him, oh, but what are you doing? He says, oh, I'm, I'm trying to. So I said, no, put it back. Do you know, he didn't say anything. But when I eventually got in and I was able to go, he had taken my number. Later, he called me and said, you know, what you did today really got me thinking. You did the right thing. I didn't see that. But, were, but sometimes you if, feel the pinch, if, but you must simply do what is right. If you were in church, you'd be given a testimony. I would be given a testimony this on this one. <laughs> but anyway, so this is where we draw the curtains. <laughs> Mind you, every day, nowadays, we go up to 10 and, well, I should say 9.55, thereabouts. Yeah, yeah. And every day, you'd have the opportunity to call in like this and share your thoughts, also on social media. So don't you miss out. But it's been fun, hasn't it? It has been. Very interesting conversations we've had. Uh, you had that conversation on the e levy injunction, yeah. pending substantive case. I, well, I, I, I always I get excited by this. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah, waiting yeah. for the next one. Yeah, see, yeah, yeah. And we'll come and do Buga Buga here. Mm. But we quickly have to wrap up. Oh, yeah. And yeah. right before we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Birthday wishes, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll do, we'll do this bit before we get to the birthday wishes. Yeah. But we all know water is life. It regulates your body temperature and keeps you alive and kicking. Awake is premium purified water treated through a strict purification process to ensure that every bottle on the market refreshes you better. We have the perfect sizes for all occasions, 330 and 500 ml bottles to fit your pockets and bags, 750 ml for the heavy drinkers and 1.5 liters for those who always want more. We have introduced our special 19-liter jars uh, for offices and homes. Now you just need to stay awake with Awake Purified Drinking Water wherever you go. So come on, wherever you are, sitting on your couch, in your office, wherever, grab a bottle of Awake Water and get quality hydration. Awake Purified Drinking Water, one for life. Remember, for every bottle you purchase, an amount is donated to the National Cardiothoracic Center. It's produced by Casa Preco. For bulk purchases, please call 0262 351 Two, five, one. Let's talk money. Did you know that the income of a young entrepreneur from some selected businesses is exempt from tax for five years? Any young entrepreneur engaged in manufacturing, information and communications technology, agro-processing, energy production, waste processing, tourism and the creative arts, horticulture and medicinal plants does not need to pay any income tax on these activities for their first five years of operation. Now, a young entrepreneur engaged in a business that enjoys an initial five-year concession benefits from the following applicable tax rates for an additional five years. Here we go. Accra and Tema, 15%. Other regional capitals outside the three northern regions, 12.5%. Outside the other regional capitals, 10%. And within the three northern regions, 5%. So if you want clarity, all you need to do, reach out to your nearest GRA office. Ghana Revenue Authority. Integrity, fairness, and service. And that is that. Uh, let's do some birthday messages, uh, Bernice, shall we? Mm -hmm. Happy birthday to King David Vo of Studio Vo. Uh, he's also known as... Shito, <laughs> a.k.a. Shito. <laughs> I wish you long life and prosperity, especially good health. This is from your daughter, Awujifa Marion. And happy, blessed birthday to... Kwehu Pifiasihene. Nana Bonsu. I Ababiu. Ababiu, the second... From Nanedu, uh, that's a uh, wife, Amasewa in La Paz, Accra. You want to do the rest? Okay, so definitely we celebrate one more time, Denisia Ajwapuma Ajay. She's right here with us. Today is that day, your birthday. Mr. Ajay's baby last, uh, if you like. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. If, if, even if we've not mentioned your name, today's your birthday, yeah? We celebrate you, okay? Mm, we celebrate definitely. You. Happy birthday to you. And on that note, uh, yeah, and we also, am I Benjamin Akako to do or Bernice Yes, Abu you are Bedulansa? Benjamin Akako and I am okay. Bernice Abubeidu Lansa. We really appreciate your company. Do make time with us. Tomorrow at 6 a.m. the show starts and you always know it's worth waking up for. Have a good day. Take care.